Ardipithecus was found in the mid-90s, but it was in very poor condition. Comes from about oh, 40, 40 miles away from where Lucy was found. But it's 4.4 million, so it's more than a million years older than Lucy. Took about uh, three or four years just to clean the specimen because the bones are so soft. Everybody thinks of it as a fossil of being some sort of hard rock. But in this case, the fossil was uh, more fragile and softer than the material around it. So it took a lot of intense preparation. It had been damaged in a number of ways. Those had to be corrected. Um, and we've been working on it for the past 10 years. Uh, the exciting thing about it is that it's more complete than Lucy, and it has more informative parts than Lucy had. Lucy had no hands or feet, but Artipithecus has both. So it tells us a great deal about how humans evolved in terms of locomotion, but in terms of uh, how they uh, uh, manipulated the world, and most importantly, how we differ uh, from the way chimpanzees and gorillas evolved. The most striking thing is, is that everybody in the world uh, up to now has thought that we evolved something that was generally chimpanzee-like. It turns out that chimpanzees have evolved from something that's more human-like. And so the evolution that we see is pretty much the reverse of what we thought. The ancestor was uh, completely different than anyone would have predicted. And there's no way you can predict it by looking at either a modern human or looking at a modern chimpanzee. You had to have a fossil record. That's why our Pithecus is so exciting. What Lucy did was create a huge question. And that question is, is why did we evolve this weird form of, of uh, locomotion, which doesn't have a lot of advantages to it. It's, you, you're pretty slow, pretty awkward. Um, you're not as agile as a chimpanzee or gorilla. You can't climb trees very much anymore. So you're not as safe. You can't nest in trees. And yet the brain is no bigger. So what the heck is going on? The other thing is that the male in her species has very small canines, which is something unlike any higher primate. All male higher primates have large, what are called sectorial canines. They project well above the other teeth, and when, they, when the mouth closes, they rub against one another and hone one another to, to keep them as sharp weapons. Uh, when you look at Lucy's species, and you look at the canines, they're the same height as the other teeth. They don't hone. And so the males could not have been using them as weapons. So the argument was is that the canine had reduced in size in order to make room and space and developmental uh, energy for the production of the large molars. Well, those large molars are responsible to living on open savannas where the food is very coarse, a lot of it is underground tubers, things that wear away the dentition very rapidly. Uh, Artipithecus gives us a whole new vision. A million years before Lucy, Artipithecus had really primitive molars. They weren't large. Uh, she was an omnivore, not a savanna dweller. She lived in trees and in woodland. And yet the male canines are small, and she's becoming bipedal. So we now have the key factor that bipedality and reduction of the canine evolved in concert with one another. The male was, became more successful if he was less aggressive and uh, more food supplying. Bipedality became an important carrying mechanism. Uh, you didn't need a lot of social cooperation because you were still arboreal. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, this was a, a major adaptive breakthrough. Then, once you were a pretty good biped, and the females were all pretty cooperative with one another, and so were the males, then the species started to expand. Uh, and then we became a, what is called a weed species, which we've been ever since. Darwin would be ecstatic. Um, he didn't have any fossils. The only fossils he had were, were Neanderthals. Uh, his theory was pretty good. I mean, Darwin argued that, we, that the, the canine reduced because we uh, took up tools. Um, and that the brain got big because um, 
we began to use tools. And that was his algorithm for human evolution. It's completely wrong, but it's only wrong because of what we know today. It's a perfectly good theory. Um, it's just the ugly facts that we've discovered. But, you know, that's the way science proceeds. Um, uh, it's disproving what you used to think was correct.